presence of the Lord as we're yet dependent on him, as we're yet dependent on corporate grace. I thank God this morning that he placed me in the body of Christ. He placed me there most particularly. He was not casual about what he did when he placed us in the body of Christ. In the body. Mm-hmm. Paul said, remember us in particular. See? We I not no highest pies of scraps left over to make a good meal. <laughs> but he looked at each one of us like a jeweler looks at a diamond. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, I'm going to fit him right there. And he set us with all his spiritual instruments. You see. And the Holy Ghost has encouraged me to stay there. Hallelujah. Well, let's open our Holy Bibles together this morning again to Exodus chapter 2. Exodus chapter 2. Exodus chapter 2. And we'll start with verse 23. And we'll read to 25. Verse 23. And it came to pass in the process of time that the king of Egypt died. And the children of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage. Can we say bondage? And they cried. And their cry came up unto God by reason of the bondage. Okay. Okay. And God heard their groaning. And God remembered his covenant. Can we say covenant? With Abraham. Oh, we should have shouted on that one. Hallelujah. With Isaac and with Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel and God had respect unto them. Now, <clears throat> as I was thinking about the divine uh, inspired text that we had sent to us uh, Thursday, last Thursday, and uh, meditating on it. I'd like to read it to you again. The Lord works with our mouth. Now, I thought about that. How does the Lord work with our mouth? In particular, how does he work with mine? It says the Lord works with our mouths. To be sure, we get what we say. Hallelujah. Now, God don't work with our mouth to say things that he doesn't want us to get. Okay? And you look at the children of Israel, they had gotten such a dilemma and they found themselves in so much bondage that the word of the Lord had failed to come out of their mouth. And uh, it was so grievous, so great to them. Their fall was 
because they, at one time they, they enjoyed all the pleasures that came with Joseph's ministry to Egypt. But a new king came and said, we're going to stop all this privilege. Uh, they're getting too big. And they're going to take over. But if we look at this scripture here in verse 23, it says, And it came to pass in the process of time that the king of Egypt died, and the children of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage. Okay. Uh, in particular, I like to say, they didn't know what to do about their bondage. Okay. They didn't know what to do about it. And they sighed about it. And we can find ourselves in some situations, uh, if I may use the word, we're in bondage and we don't know what to do about it. We're not spiritual enough to judge ourselves. You see, he the spiritual judges himself and he's judged in no man. But this bondage was, is beyond our spiritual capability at this time. Okay? We don't know how we're going to get out of it. But God comes along and he starts to work with our mouth and put the words in our mouth that he can bring about that which he wants to do for us. To bring the deliverer on the scene. Okay? And so it says here, they sighed by reason of the bondage. Okay? And they cried. Nothing said. And their cry came up unto God by reason of the bondage. Okay? Now, God allowed them to enter into this bondage because he knew the thoughts that he thought of them. To do them good and bring them respect to the end. So what he had to do is work with their mouth. He had to put them in some bondage so that they learn how to use their mouth to get what they want. Now, now because of the bondage, the whole nation is crying. They're crying out now. They're not talking about, uh, uh, let's go to the movie. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go buy me a new car. I just got me a new mule. I'm going to buy me a new robe. I'm, uh, see, all of that God cut out. You see? Because he wanted to get them expected in. He wanted to do something good for them, but it wasn't in their mouth. He had to work with their mouth to do something with their mouth. And he, 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 he put them in this bondage so that God, in verse 24, so that God could hear their groaning. You see? See, groaning, uh, in, as, as it says in uh, uh, Romans 8.26, Romans 8.26. Romans chapter 8, verse 820. I got a, new, got a new holy Bible here, so I'm breaking it in. See that them pages stick? Yeah, that's Indian paper there. <laughs> okay, verse 26. Is that correct? Yeah, see there, it says there in verse 26. Okay. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray as we ought. See, sometimes it's some, it's some bondage that they come into our life that we don't know how to pray as we ought. And God got to work with our mouth so he can put in our mouth what we need to pray so God can do what he wants to do for us. See, no more of these Mary had a little lamb prayers. You see. We're in a bad situation. We don't know what to pray. We, 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 we used to say these little prayers. We had these little pet prayers we go. But the situation has got great now. You see. You know how sometimes you come in and say a little prayer and get up and say, well, I can handle it. But this you can't handle. You need some help. And God got to work with our mouth to get us where he has, uh, the plan he has for us. 
So he had to put them in bondage so that they could learn where to focus their prayers at. To God. Hallelujah. You see. A lot of times, God has to work with our mouth to put us in a situation where it's so beyond us that God got to have the Spirit come pray for us and produce deep groanings in us that only God can understand. That's when saints start praying. It's, it's just the Spirit helping our firmity. For we know not what we should pray as we are. Okay. okay. But the Spirit itself making intercession for us with groanings. See there? Which cannot be uttered. So you can't really say what you want to say because you know how to say it. So the Spirit on the inside, when we just fall out before the Lord, it starts it start making intercession for us and have deep groanings before the Lord. By the reason of the situation God has put us in to arrange our mouth so that for the first time in some of our lives, we start praying as we all. You see. We run here and there, back and forth, here and there, say a little prayer here, say a little prayer there. And then all of a sudden God said, well, I'm going to have to help them out now because they're not spiritual enough to judge themselves. They don't know. We don't know. We out of whack. You see. Our mouth is talking about everything else but prayer. All right, talk to me. And then when the problems come, we don't have the spiritual strength to pray as we ought, so the spirit itself must go to work. But what I'm trying to suggest to you is that when you find yourself in a dire situation, don't panic. God is working with our mouth. Uh -huh. So that we'll start praying the type of prayers that Hannah prayed, see Glory to God. Hannah went to praying. Hallelujah. She went to praying so much, the man of God thought she was drunk. And probably been me the same thing. I said, ma'am, could you get up and go in that room over there, please? <laughs> you see. So I took the take that sometimes we get we slip. We don't stay steadfast and unmovable. I always bound in the work of the Lord. And God has to come judge the matter. You see. Glory to God. Israel was still hoping in the negotiation with Pharaoh to get some favorable status so that everything one day they'll come out of the mud pit. That day didn't come. You see. They had a good relationship with Pharaoh and his because they go to Pharaoh and say, Pharaoh, why are you doing this thing? What's going on? Why are you taking the strong way? Come on now. You know us. We get a little strong. You get a little bricks. He said, get out of my face. Nobody want to hear that. <laughs> so they lost that relationship. So they had made it where it was tolerable. So God had, to, God had to cook up the fire a little bit, as it were, to get his people to cry out and and. and, and and God will work with our mouth so that we don't have all that foolishness in our mouth no more. You see. We'll get down to business. Amen. We'll be praying without ceasing. Amen. Glory to God. We'll, we'll be groaning and uttering words that, 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 that cannot be uttered, but we're groaning up under the office of the Holy Ghost because the reason of the bondage we find ourselves in, uh, we're crying out to God so that God's going to come up and show himself and put victory in our mouth because he is our deliverer. Yeah. Amen. Thank you. See. We're running around. Maybe I will go to Bible study. Maybe I'm not. Joshua said, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate day and, day and night. I'm meditating every other week. Get a few words and get up. Don't stay on it, see. Egypt didn't stay, uh, uh, Israel didn't stay on it like they should. You see. And when the groaning went up, nothing they did up to that time caused God to move on their behalf. None of that talking, none of that, what they were doing, none of that caused God to move. God had to work with their mouth so that they were having their mouth what would cause God to move. Everything else they said up to then didn't cause God to move. God had to bring them to a place that would not only they cry, but they had groanings in them. God said, I think I got something now. 
See, I'm ready to move now. I'm ready to send the deliverer. Glory to God. See, God needed them to grow so he could bring Moses on the scene. <laughs> as long as they were talking about millions and honeydews and, and pork chops and, <laughs> and barbecue, uh, whatever, uh, Moses, wasn't, Moses couldn't come about. But he needed them to be grown in so he could send the deliverer. You see that? And, and God is going to work with some of us in such a way that we get spiritual enough to judge ourselves so that this dilemma we find ourselves in will not be prolonged. God has to come judge it. We're not spiritual enough to judge it. God has to put us in a situation to where we, we don't have all the resources we used to have to facilitate our foolishness. Then we just, all the only thing we can do, we, 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 we can't run to our favorite movie, can't run to our favorite friend's house, we can't run to our favorite meal. All we can do is fall on our faith. We can't even pray. All we can do is groan and cry. Oh, oh, oh God. Oh, God. Help me, God. Say, so you okay in there? No, but I will be in a little bit. Oh, God. Oh, <laughs> Oh, Lord God, Jesus, oh, God. Save me from the dilemma. I've been wrong. I didn't do right. I didn't hope in your salvation. I was hoping in the government of Egypt. I thought they were going to bring me out. Glory to God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Yeah. See, God will work with our mouth. Get all that foolishness out of our mouth. So we can get down to doing some business with God. Mm -hmm. You put your a bondage that he allow a bondage to come your way that you can get out. Ask Jacob when you see him. You see, Jacob had to break down. I fear <laughs> Esau. See, God has to get us where we can utter. Grown is deep by the work of the Holy Spirit in us so that God can hear those groanings and remember his covenant, the better covenant, in his son's blood. And he would do things because of that covenant that he wouldn't do for any other reason. You see? See, when he, when he heard them groaning, he remembered not the pain they was in, he remembered Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He remembered what he spoke to them. And we got a better covenant Amen. based on better promises Amen. in the precious blood of the Lamb of God. Amen. And when we get to groaning deep in the spirit, go to groaning in us, oh, God can't, God can't turn away from that. Now, he can turn away from them pancake prayers, but not groaning in us that the spirit is praying. Oh, that's going to get God's attention. He said, let me go down and have respect. <laughs> let me set them free. See, God wants us to be one, have one mouth. One mouth. See? I see it. One mouth. One. Jesus Christ gave his life and his blood so that we could be one, not only in uh, doctrine, not only one, but one in experience. One body, one body, valuing the body, Amen. valuing what God put us in the body. Amen. You see, and okay. you have to do things and to work with our mouth so that we'll start praying in such a way that God can get that done in a quick time. Yes. God ain't got another 40 years for us to be a one mind, one heart, and one spirit. Open our mouth, you see. That others may be given up. That our corporate mouth may open up. You see. And God's going to work with us. Don't get discouraged. Just, and, you, and you feel them groanings in you that you never felt before. That's the spirit working on the inside. Hallelujah. Ushering you in the presence of God. See, here, here's some new fresh groanings from Pastor Brown. <laughs> I haven't seen them in a while. Hallelujah. 
you see. And that's what I was thinking about when I read the text. God got to work with my mouth, you see, so that I will speak the things that God will create. And like he told Moses, you see, I put my words in your mouth. So when you open your mouth, I can do what you say. In Jesus' name. Well, beloved, I said as clear as I can. I'm looking more for the judgment to come than ever before so God can work with my mouth. See, God will work with your mouth so much that once you get on the other side and get free from Egypt and get on the other side of the river, you have a big part. Hallelujah. <laughs> you put victory in your mouth, see? They went to singing when they got on the other side of the Red Sea. Did they go to singing? God put something in their mouth. He put a song in their mouth. He worked with their mouth. They went to party. Amen. Because their bondage was gone, and the one that came back to put them in bondage, they couldn't even see no more. Even I'm thinking about going back and see if I can dig it up and get me some of that gold that's down there. In Jesus' name. Praise his name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. When the Lord starts working with your mouth, don't get discouraged. Get encouraged. Amen. Just go fall out before the Lord. The Holy Spirit will take it up from there. He make sure you get an audience with the Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Any more words of life on this matter? God working with our mouth. Yes, sir. I'd just like to draw our attention to the prayer focus and at the bottom in the last box of the prayer focus.